can run an ad that's going to go to those people. They're going to see it. They're going to click it. They're going to come into your world. You can send them to a video that explains their problem and how you can help them. If you do that in the right way, they will book a call. And if you know how to close, you will close that call and get money. What's going on, everyone? We are here with William Brown, author of How to 10 Million, Sell Your Knowledge and Make Millions. William is... Uh, not only an author of this book, but he's pretty much the only guy I know in the world who's ever won a, it's not a two comma club award, it's a t 10X or something? Two comma club X. Two comma club X award, who's then, which means he went on to make 10 million with his funnel, but then who went on to then sell it to a private equity firm for many millions after that. I don't know of anyone else who's done something like that, do you? No. Who's done a two comma club X and then sold it privately. No, I don't think anyone in the world has ever got that 10 million award. And then, I mean, we, we did on the day that we sold, which was September 30th last year, we totted up all the money and it was just above 16.4 million in sales that we'd done across six years. Uh, so that was like the final number uh, on the day that we, we sold the company. So, And then I'm curious though, why you think most people who have an education business who've won two comma club boards, don't sell. Yeah, I think it's it's two things. Number one, a lot of people like I didn't, they don't know that they can sell. Mm -hmm. And I was lucky to find that out by by accident, right? So I was at a mastermind in, in England run by this guy called Dan Bradbury. And it's a, it's a financial literacy mastermind, all about like P&Ls, balance sheets, knowing your numbers, all, all, all that stuff. So very beneficial. And we were having dinner one day and just off the cuff, he just said to me, like, I'm saying to you now. So he was like, so when are you going to sell the company? And I was like, oh, I can't. And he was like, why? He was like, well, it's my face. It's my name. And he was like, you can absolutely sell it. All that matters is if you don't build it to sell, you'll sell to a lesser buyer for a lesser price. And if you build it to sell, you'll sell to a better buyer for a better price. And through that mastermind and through some one-to-one some -one coaching that I did with him, he helped me get the business ready for sale. And then he helped me find an M&A advisor who found us the, the buyer. So I think one thing that stops people selling is just they kind of don't believe that they can. And if they do believe that they can, the second thing is just building it in the right way so that it is saleable. That's kind of the second part of the, the puzzle. So really thank God for my mentor, Dan Bradbury, for even asking me that question that day. Yeah, that's phenomenal. And it's like, I think that's the case with most things in life. You see something and you instantly think, oh, they can do it, but I can't. Very much so. Yeah, I think, um, dude, belief. Mm -hmm. I, I think I mentioned this in, in the book and I mentioned it on another podcast recently. I don't know where I've got this from, but all my life, I've always believed that I could do anything to, to a certain extent, sure. you know, and it served me very well because I've just blindly gone into things like, you know, my first proper career was as a, a DJ and record producer. And did you know that? Yeah. Yeah. And I went into that and I remember saying to all my friends, like, I'm going to get signed to this label and then I'm going to get a manager. Then I'm going to get an agent and I'm going to tour all over the world and then I'm going to do this. And I think they probably thought, shut the fuck up, man. You know, <laughs> that's not going to happen, but, 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 but it all did. And then um, this education business that I recently sold, that kind of started by accident. Mm -hmm. because you've got a cool origin story man I'd love to get into that it's really weird how, how this whole education business started it just asked it just started from somebody asking me for help and then I invited them over they gave me well, like they, they, they asked you hey can I pay you? it almost sounds creepy now but can I pay you 50 bucks to sit beside you and look at you all day yeah well <laughs> it, 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 it was something similar to that for sure he basically said you know my cousin had mentioned that trading was going well and he said, he wants to get into it. And can I help him? And I was like, yeah, just give me some money. Come over, sit next to me, make notes and go away, basically. And he did that. And uh, then I started selling the little two-page Word document that he made for, for the same, like 50 pounds or dollars or whatever it was. And then I actually sold a few. And then that gave me the confidence to think, wow, people will actually buy this. And then it just spiraled from there. So, but yeah. Yeah, and that was when you were doing trading, right? Exactly, yeah. So that was... So towards the end of my music career, when I was about 26, I started to realize the importance of money because up to then I just lived with my parents and I thought one or two or three K per month was, yeah. was a lot of money when I was 21, 22, 23. But when I was 25, 26, 
you know, my friends started buying houses, buying. I remember one day I saw one of my high school friends driving a brand new Audi A5. And I remember thinking, how on earth did you get that? How, how on earth did you afford that? Because I probably had 4K to my name, if, if that. So it started to become a thing, money. And I was like, M music income is very sporadic. Then I found trading and I thought that's the answer that can fill in for the gap in income in music and give me a bit more stability, which it did for a, for a period of time through beginner's luck. I turned 500 pounds into the better part of 10,000, blew most of it in a single day, as many <laughs> traders do, then became profitable. And then the education thing happened and, and that very quickly took over. And when the education business started, that was about the time when I stopped doing music because I just thought this is, I wasn't enjoying it anymore. wasn't enjoying the traveling, wasn't enjoying the loneliness, was making music to make money, not for the art of it. So I was like, that's not going to end well. Transitioned out of music, transitioned uh, into the education business primarily because that was making so much money. It was just printing cash. So That was selling a Word document. Yeah, so when, first started. when we first started, it was a Word document. Then it turned into basically a PDF. Mm. Then it turned into more of an ebook. It was like a PDF with, you know, uh, headlines and text and images and explainers and stuff. And I slowly raised the price as we made it better and we got customer feedback. Then it turned into a small online course, like a Dropbox folder of videos with the kind of ebook. Then into an online course when I joined Alex Becker's Mastermind. Mm. And that, like, changed the game when I learned about sales funnels and webinars and all this crazy stuff. Yeah. So you started this because you had gotten some results with trading. So you learned how to make some money with trading. Other people are like, oh, I want to learn how to make money with trading too. I'll buy your Word document. I'll buy your PDF. I'll buy your Dropbox. I'll buy your course. Where are these buyers coming from? How, where, how do people find out about you? Good question. So back when I was just trading, I had a Twitter because a lot of traders like to use Twitter. It's mm -hmm. like the main platform for, for traders. So I had a Twitter and that is what got me that first buyer. But how did they know? Because you were just posting your trades? Exactly. Yeah. So I was like all day, every day I would share my trades. I would share what I'm getting in here. I'm getting out here. This is my journal. I'm doing this. I'm watching this YouTube video. I'm reading this book. It's like a journal, really, my, my Twitter. And it's still there. You can just go back and see it. It's all still there. Right back to 2017, I think. Um, and that's what got me followers because people started following to see what I was doing and see the trades I was taking and just hit, chat to me and stuff. So that's what got me the first, uh, buyer. And then I, I was already talking to a few other traders and I would send the word document out to them and, and say, look, do you want to buy this thing? Wissam just bought it for $50 and we've made it together. Do you, let me know if you need it as well. And then two or three people bought it. You'd send it as a private DM. Yeah, just DM them. Like, just just outreach them, basically. And that got me just a few sales, just three or four or five sales. But even $250 was impactful to me back then, for sure, because I was getting paid about 500 to 600 per DJ set. Mm. But I'd have to travel to Sweden to get that 600 and then come back and then travel to, like, you know, wherever else to get the next. So it's, 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 not, it's not good for money, music. But nonetheless, then I started a YouTube because I thought, and by the way, I didn't know what out, outreach was back, back then. I was just going on common sense. I just thought, Wissam follows me and he bought it. I've got other followers. Maybe they will buy it. And I thought, right, I've only got like three, 400 followers. How can I get more people? So then I started a YouTube channel and I would record my screen when I was trading, put it on YouTube, make educational videos, put them on YouTube. Then I got more f subscribers and then I would encourage them to follow me on Twitter, and then I would outreach them to try and sell them whatever I was selling at the time, whether it was the Word document or the PDF or whatever. So I got traffic from YouTube, sent it to Twitter. Twitter was the boiling pot sure. where I would basically, that was the conversion mechanism for then. And so that was Twitter and then the YouTube and that fed into there. Then I started a website, right, when I was about four, God, five, six months in. And then um, I basically made a, you know, it was like an about me page and a buy my strategies, learn from me page, my trades page. Um, and then I started sending all the traffic there. And I was selling, when I get, got closer to the course, I was selling a bronze, silver, gold, platinum for like, it was like just the Dropbox folder or the Dropbox folder in the ebook or the Dropbox folder in the ebook in a coaching session with me. 
you know, a few different tiers. That worked very well. Um, and I just scaled it up from there and just slowly, slowly figured just it out. Sent tr organic traffic to a website with options. Yeah. This was back in what year? 2020, 2019? So the first year was 2018, mm. right? That's the year. I think it was, it was April or May that I made that very first ever sale. And across that year, I did about 30K, right? In 2019 was then... Yeah, no, that was it. What was before Alex's mastermind? Twenty nineteen was the year that we started doing the bronze, silver, gold, platinum, the coaching, the course, the Dropbox, the website, mm. the YouTube, the Twitter, and growing it all. And we did about two seventy to two eighty that second year. And then December twenty nineteen, I saw an ad from Alex Becker about webinars and sales funnels, and I bought his program. And that like just was insane. It just. Then I, I turned paid ads on January 2020, just YouTube before ads. YouTube ads, into a fake live webinar a funnel. Web webinar jam, yeah. Good old, good old <laughs> yeah. webinar jam. And dude, we were printing money. Like we were 12x cash. And that was going webin uh, at YouTube ad to webinar to checkout page where you can pick your own option? No. So, so at that stage, we through the webinar, we only sold my top tier thing, which was my platinum program for one and a half thousand pounds. So like $2,000, right? And uh, it was a YouTube ad to an opt-in to a webinar. And then at the end of the webinar, uh, you would have the option to buy the one and a half thousand pound program. And dude, like that was just insane. We did over a, like, I think we did about 1.2, 1.3 million that year cash. And it was just mental. Mm. Yeah, it was just fucking crazy. I went to the Funnel Hacking Live, ClickFunnels Live event, and I sat in the crowd. This was a few years ago, and I saw all the guys go on stage to win their two comic club awards, and I talked to them all afterwards. I was like, so how'd you do it? What was your sales process like? And it was exactly what you just said. It was ad to landing page to a webinar to a 997 plus offer. Yeah. That's it. That was the era of the webinar. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Like 2019, 2020, 2021, and... Dude, when I joined Alex's program, there were people in there, I, I, won't, I won't name names, but there were people in there that were doing 30, 40, 50K a month that are now doing a million a month, 3 million a month, 5, 10 million a month. And it all came from the webinars. Yeah. You know? That's how I made my first million as well. Yeah. Same thing, bro. Yeah. Ad, Facebook ad or Instagram ad, webinar. But then I didn't go to checkout page. I went to book a call. And so you got into that too, right? You eventually got into the book a call. Yeah, because because what happened was, so just as I moved to Dubai, I moved to Dubai April twenty twenty one, right, and May June the webinar we were spending about a quarter of a million a month on on ads, and we were doing about one point three x cash ROI, what one point four one point five at towards the end of it, so we just rinsed it, we just squeezed all the juice out of it. We've been running it for so long for like. <laughs> Years. The same you know. webinar? Same webinar. Same offer. Same offer. <laughs> same ad? Yes, but largely same <laughs> ads. Yeah. Um, honestly, like we, it just ran like a workhorse for years and made millions of dollars. It was awesome. But when the ROI started to fade off, we were like, what's next? And then I'd been in Sam Bowen's mastermind and I'd just joined Cole Gordon's mastermind and we moved to a VSL funnel basically. Mm. So we scrapped the webinar. I wrote a brand new VSL and then we just started turning the ads away from the webinar to the VSL. That's people it. People are always debating this. Like what's the main difference between a webinar and a VSL? You've got more control. You've got way more control. In what sense? Over the prospect. Because on a webinar, you have to work so hard to sell them, to get them to buy. If you're selling from the webinar, it is a mission. It's extremely hard. But to get someone to book a call is a tenth of the work. Gotcha. So you're saying VSL is something that gets people to book a call. Yeah. Whereas webinars gets them to buy from a checkout page. Exactly. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. And then, I mean, you can charge so much more. I mean, you know, from the webinar, we were doing 1.5K. When we moved to the sales call VSL funnel, we started charging 2.8K. Um, and then after about four or five months, we went to 3.8. Then we went to 4.8 and 5.8 then 6.8 which is like eight and a half thousand US. And it just, the minute that we moved from the webinar to the VSL, we were like 4X cash immediately. Yeah. 
It's it's interesting how you can raise the price like that without changing anything other than improving your delivery. Yeah. Because you have more cash now to help your clients better. Yeah. But like there's no difference in the actual phone conversation. There's no difference in their response when you drop the price, yeah. you tell them the price, like they'll just buy. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's fascinating. Super cool. And I also find with webinars, they have to be longer to get them to buy, whereas a VSL can be like 15 minutes. Exactly. They are, they're a million times easier to make. Yep. Like, dude, I literally made our VSL in two days. Like one day I wrote the entire script. The next day I did the voiceover, did the slides, edited it together, put it live, just changed the, uh, I didn't even change the opt-in, same ads, same opt-in. But then instead of going to a webinar, right. they'd land on a VSL, yes. book a call. It was me and my first ever rep, Alex, taking calls, just like mm, fucking going so hard on the calls. And it was awesome. Immediately, we went from like uh, 1.3x cash to 4x, 5x cash. I love how you didn't even change the ad or opt-in page. Didn't change anything. <laughs> Nothing. Cool. So one thing that I've been sold on for the longest time that some people still aren't sold on is this vehicle of selling online education. To me, it's like the ultimate no brainer of like, it's the easiest way to make the most amount of money in the shortest period of time. I'm curious for you, like why you're so bullish on selling online education as well. Yeah, for sure. Well, online education completely changed my life. If it wasn't for online education, I wouldn't be sat here today. In, 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 in so many ways, you know, I mean, without the coaches and the courses and the mentors and the masterminds, mm. Dan Bradbury, Alex Becker, Cole Gordon, Sam Ovens, on and on, how you can't learn yourself, you know, and whatever it is, whether it's growing a business, whether it's fitness, mm. whether it's addiction, mm. I've worked with so many people in so many niches and people out there, this, this is why it works and why it's so great. There's people out there that need help. Let's just say fitness, right? There's somebody out there that is overweight. They're just, they're, the mind is not right. Their body is not right. And they don't know what to do. If you are skilled in that area, then the great thing is you can run an ad that's going to go to those people. They're going to see it. They're going to click it if it's written well enough. They're going to come into your world. You can send them to a video that explains their problem and how you can help them. If you do that in the right way, they will book a call. And if you know how to close, you will close that call and get money. So that's great for you. And then at that stage when the transaction takes place and you take the money, you can then give the value and truly help people. Mm -hmm. You know, I truly believe online education is one of the highest integrity ways to make money. Mm -hmm. As long as you do it well and you fucking care and you make a good program, a good product, and you care about your customers and you look after them, there's no better way to make money. You know, it's, you get to make a lot of bloody money, man. A lot, millions and millions, tens of millions. And you get to help a lot of people. What other career allows you to do that? From, from home, from anywhere, from anywhere, where you're the boss, where you have complete control. It's the best thing in the world, man. I've heard someone else call online education, online transformation. Mm. So it's like, yeah, you can see you have an education company or another way of looking at it is you have an online transformation company where you transform yeah. people's lives. Yeah. Because like you said, you wouldn't even be at this table without the education you received. Yeah. And same with me. Uh, pretty much every mentor you listed, I've also binge watched every single one of their videos on repeat sometimes. How old are you, by the way? 33. 33? Same as me. Right when, on. What month is your birthday? October 5th. Okay. I'm in June. So who's older? I think you were... Just a tiny bit older, aren't you? Okay. Tiny, I, th I, th I think I might be wrong. <laughs> we don't know if October comes first. I think October comes first, doesn't it? No, June comes first. June comes first? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> You've eaten too many, too much fruit today. <laughs> <laughs> Not the best with date orders. <laughs> um, so I'm curious, like, in, you and I have both helped a lot of beginners get started in this online space. Plus, we've also helped a lot of people who are already making good money make even more money. Mm. But from your experience, what do you feel like or what do you, what do you see being the biggest misconception beginner, beginners have about starting an online education business? Well, one of the things that I think comes to their mind first is either, uh, do I have enough value to share? You know, do, do, am, am I good at anything that's good enough to sell? 
you know, is, is the first thing. And then if they can answer yes to that and say like, I am a very good, uh, I'm very good at writing books, right? When they can answer that first thing, do I have something that's good enough to sell? The next thing is like self-belief. It's like, what, what will people say about me? What will people think about me? Will people buy from me? What do I charge? How do I sell it? Then all these questions come up and those are the ones that I solve for people. You know, when I work with people through the book, through the program, through the coaching, then it's just how to make your promise, how to craft your offer, what to charge for it, what's the right sales process, on and on. So those two things. The first thing is the biggest hurdle. It's like, do you have, I mean, I always say to people, I can only work with you if you've got a talent, a skill, or valuable knowledge, Mm. right? And I think some people think, I think a lot of people devalue what they're good at, you know? Oh, yeah, because to them it comes naturally a lot of times. Yeah. So they're like, yeah, yeah. I can run really fast, so what? Yeah, I can do a backflip, so what? Yeah. Yeah, I can do the split, so what? Yeah, I can play piano, so what? Yeah, I can write a book, so what? Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of them selling themselves first mm-hmm. on that they are good enough and they are... I, I, I described it in one of my uh, YouTube videos, this scale of uh, zero to ten, where let's say Tiger Woods is the ten of golf... Now, even if you're only a four, you can teach ones, you know, and if you're a, if you're a three, you could teach ones, honestly, if you're a five, you can teach twos and threes. If you're a seven, you can teach four and fives and sixes. So whatever your skill, your talent, your specialist knowledge is, where are you on that scale? And if you're at least a three or a four, Mm -hmm. you can teach beginners. And beginners, I think, wouldn't even want to learn from Tiger Woods. They'd be too intimidated. And it would be too expensive. too good. He's too expensive and he's too good. Like, I'd be wasting his time. I might as well learn from a four, might as well learn from a five and get up there. Exactly. So someone said this, someone commented on one of my YouTube videos and said, um, if Tiger Woods taught, you'd be stupid to buy from anybody else. But I was like, that's not true. Because if you were a, a complete beginner, you, it was just too much to learn, man, to yeah. become a fucking 10. You know, not to mention the price as well. It'd be probably a hundred grand to work with him. So, Yeah. What what do you feel like is one of the the biggest like so those are some of the misconceptions they have but what do you think are some of the or what's one of the biggest mistakes you see beginners make when they finally say okay I'm gonna build this online education company I'm gonna build this online business one of the key mistakes is charging too low mm. by far mm-hmm. and I've pulled that lever so many times I mean people have literally come in and worked with me and we've just reset the price to something higher and more appropriate. They've instantly made more money. Sometimes you've got to adjust the sales process a little bit, sales script a bit, the VSL a bit, the positioning slightly. But it, it it's very fast and easy to do. If you just do those things right, you can double your business, triple your business. And I've done that before for, for people. So price is a big mistake that the beginners make. And uh, not working with me is another big mistake that people make. <laughs> no, that's not, I shouldn't say that. But uh, it's just the basic stuff. You know, pricing, offer, sales process, copywriting mm. is a big one mm-hmm. as well. Most people suck at writing, dude. Well, yeah, it's. I mean, it, it is hard. It's writing but copy can, is hard. But yeah, if you don't know what you're doing, but yeah, I think you could become pretty damn good within a week of like practicing and studying and yeah. getting shit reviewed from someone like yourself, like getting a coach to review your work. Yeah, it's definitely learnable, but most people suck from the get go. Yeah, co- copy is a skill. You know, I remember uh, when I was building the first business that I just sold, Dan Bradbury actually said to me, um, we were breaking down what I was doing in the business and I was doing everything. But one thing specifically, I was running my own ads. Mm. And Dan said, you shouldn't do that because it's someone's profession to run ads. It's not your profession to run ads. So go and give it to a professional, right? And uh, obviously, you know, you've got to have budget for this stuff, but copywriting is the same, where if you can afford to get a copywriter to write your VSL, or your ads, or help you with your sales script and your pitch, or just anyone, just a good coach or, or anyone, you know, straight away, you get more traction, you get more leads, you get more customers, sales calls, you get more sales. Just these little refinements. Yeah. You know? One of the best things I ever did for my webinar was I went on Upwork.com and I hired like 10 people just to watch it and give me feedback mm. and answer a series of questions. Like, what was the most boring part of this? What part did you like the least? Which part was the most confusing? Would you buy it? Why or why not? 
And from these 10 reviews, I was like, this is amazing. I'm going to fix that part, remove that part, change this part, add this part. Super helpful. Man, that is very valuable. That I, I never thought about that. But now you can just highlight your script, put it in a chat GPT and ask the same questions. <laughs> and chat GPT will be like, this part wasn't very clear. That part seems a little suspect. So now you can get chat GPT to like help you at least with the first first version. Yeah, I, I think I think I'd trust a human more. Yeah, but sure. uh, man, that is really smart. Mm -hmm. I might actually test that out in the future. Yeah, highly recommend. Yeah. Um, what what do you what do you think is the fastest way? So somebody reads this book and they're like, "Okay, I want to start getting clients." And maybe you cover this in the book. I'm not sure, but what do you think is like the fastest way for them to go and land their first client within the next say seventy two hours, if possible? That's pretty fast. 72 hours to one week. Well, it depends whether they've got uh, an organic following or not. Let's say they do have a following. They have a following. Yeah. Oh, God, that's easy, man. Like, that is so easy. So let's say someone came to me. Uh, well, I'll give you an example, right? So do you know who Mike uh, Thurston is, the fitness? Of course. Yeah. So I had, I'll, I'll, I won't tell the full story because I don't want to bore you to death. But basically, Mike came to me. He had a big YouTube channel, as we all know. And he wanted to do a mastermind, right? So I wrote him a VSL and I said, right, there's the script, make it, make the video, upload it to your channel, uh, set up an online store in a Stripe so you can take a payment, right? And we were selling uh, 12 $10,000 tickets to a three-day mastermind in Dubai, right? So I fully scripted the webinar. I said, make the video, get a buy link, upload it to YouTube video with the buy link in the description and you'll sell it out in a day. He made the video, he uploaded it to YouTube, he sold it out in a day. So he sold, made 100 grand in a day? 120,000 in, uh, it was actually 21 hours Wow. that, that it took. For what us was to the it. event for? Three day lifestyle mastermind here a in Dubai. lifestyle mastermind? Yeah. How to get fit? Yeah, so uh, those 12 people, we actually reopened it and did 15 people because more, more people wanted in the, the next day, but nonetheless. Three days with Mike and you would uh, go to his apartment and he would teach you stuff about building your brand and how he's done it and how to create content and oh, okay. that kind of thing. So it was like, it was like um, uh, kind of like a business mastermind. Yeah, and then he would like go to the gym with them and go to a beach club, go to a, cool. a restaurant with them all for dinner. Like a three-day private retreat with Thurston. Basically. Cool. Yeah, so to come back to your point, how would you make a hundred grand in a day? Well, if you've got an audience that's big enough sure. and you write a good VSL and you make a good offer, it's, it's a piece of cake, man. So it's free money. And he uploaded that VSL to YouTube? Yeah. And made it a public video? Yeah. So he made it a public upload. Cool. And then when we'd sold it out, he just deleted the video. Amazing. And for someone who doesn't have a following? If you don't have a following, then you've really, I mean, you can either do cold outreach or you can run paid ads. Or, or both in, in an ideal world. So you'd have to design an offer. You'd have to, let's just go the paid ads route. You'd have to write ads, build a funnel, uh, turn the ads on, drive traffic, book some sales calls, close so, so some of those sales calls, put, put the money in the bank, okay? And in case anybody's watching this thinking, whoa, 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 you missed the product out. Where's the product? What are you going to sell them? Just sell them one-to-one -one consulting. Just sell them one-to-one -one coaching via Zoom. I say that all the time. I say selling coaching is so easy. You trade a Zoom link for money. Yeah, I, I like that. I'm going to use that. That's you good. Trade a Zoom link for money, man. That's it. Yeah. Like, because everyone wants to know about the deliverables. Yeah. The most valuable deliverable is the link. Yeah, and I do. I always say to people, a lot of people say to me, oh, but I don't have testimonials, though. Yeah. And I always say, you are the testimonial. Mm -hmm. It's your background, your experience, you know, your knowledge. That's it. And, and, and I also think another way of using a testimonial, even if you don't have a lot or any, and it's just you, you could also point to like famous successful people and be like, that's what they did. Yeah. Like Tiger Woods did this or Michael Jordan did this. I'm going to teach you the same thing Michael Jordan did. Yeah. Like you just point to mega successful people. You're not claiming to have been their coach or anything. You're just like, this guy did the same thing. Yeah, that's a powerful way to build, kind of bring authority in mm -hmm. without you, you having it. So. Yeah, I remember I watched a webinar one time. Some guy was teaching the three productivity secrets of Elon Musk. Mm. And at the end, he like sold his own productivity course. I'm like, That's really clever. He got me in because I'm interested in Elon Musk. That's smart. He sold his own course, which has nothing to do with Elon, but it's part of the hook. Yeah, very smart. So there's so many ways to do this, man. I mean, if 
when people come to me and they've got an audience, I'm like, let's go. This is going to be easy. When people come and they don't have an audience, as long as they've got like a good offer, I know like I can book calls for almost anyone, mm. you know, or almost any offer promise industry. I can write good ads, build a good opt-in, write a good VSL and book sales calls. And then uh, one of the biggest problems I see usually is people then can't close the calls. Mm -hmm. It's easy to get the calls, relatively easy if you know what you're doing. They're learning closing and being good on the phone, being confident on the phone, that's the next roadblock. Um, and some of us find it easy. Like I've, I, I like selling because I like speaking to people and conveying that I can help them. Uh, some people don't, but like anything, you can learn it. Some people hate it. Yeah, I don't know why people hate it. It's just like... You just chat to someone that you can help. You're like, hey man, why did you come here? Yep. What, what's what, what's what, going on? What made you book the call? Yeah, how, how can I help you? What's on your mind? What yep. have you tried before? What What do you want? Where? Blah, blah, blah. Yep. Why do you want it? Yeah. And at the end, at the end, like, at the end of our calls, like, we don't even say like, okay, let, let me tell you about the program now. Here's how much it costs. We just kind of like go quiet. And then the person's like, all right, so like, how much is it? How do I get started? They're like ready to buy. We don't even have to do anything because we just ask them some good questions on the call. Yeah, I mean, that's what it is. It's skill, isn't it? You know, it's if, if you ask the right things, it's like a webinar. If you can write a good webinar, it's going to work. If you've never done one, it probably isn't. Right. You know, if you've got a good sales script and you know what you're doing, it's going to work. If you don't, probably isn't. So. Yeah. And what's cool about this flow from getting someone to go from cold to sold is it's very repeatable. Like you said, you use the same ad, the same webinar. You even switched out the offer in the back and it still worked. Yeah. Because it's just so repeatable. Like mm -hmm. if so if this is the thing I love about it, it's like if you can get one click on an ad, you can get two. If you can get two, you can get three. Mm. If you can get one opt-in, you can get two. If you can get two opt-ins, you can get three. Yeah. If you can get once you can get one person to book a call, you can get two people to book a call. Yeah. See, this is the thing, man. It's just that's why paid ads are so good. Because uh -huh, you can just turn the dial. Yeah. When you dial paid ads in. It's an amazing thing. Um, I'm a big fan of organic at the moment because I'm not actually running ads for the first time ever. Yeah, your organic's crushing, dude. Right now. Yeah, it's just organic, so. Yeah, this the other crazy thing about this. You made that, your first 10 mil, I believe, without a personal brand. Yeah, I, I didn't. I actually didn't show my face ever. Like, yeah, that's insane. It, it was just it's my just... name and slides. And your voice. And, and my voice, of course, yeah. Wow, so no one even knew what you look like. No one. You're just showing the charts. Yeah. And yeah, it's interesting. Like no one knew what you look like and nobody cared. No one cared. They just want the... No one cares, man. They just want the outcome. Yeah. You know. And I suppose just... if you're like Thurston, you're selling a six pack and ripped chest, then you kind of have to... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like I mean, way. personal brands are selling you. Uh -huh, that's They're it. selling you, your lifestyle, your fitness, your cars, your yeah. whatever. But for me, I actually wanted to do the opposite. I wanted to just sell the skill, you know, of the, the outcome... It's really you know, cool. Not, not me. And it, it gave me a big edge as well. It really helped me. Yeah, so not only did you get the Two Comma Club X award, not only did you then s sell to a private equity firm, but you did it all without showing your face. Yeah. That's what's that's so wild. I love that. It's cool, isn't it? I love that. Yeah. W w what do you think is like the one trait, the one character trait that – is different between the people who go on to make millions with their online company and those who rarely even get off the ground? They've got an edge and it's almost indescribable. Like Alex Homozi, just look at the guy, how he acts, how he speaks, how he dresses. He's just his own edge. Sam Ovens as well. He had that like quiet, geeky, intelligent, almost weird. And it's, it's just, he's got an edge. You know, I, I, I don't know whether I've got that, to, to, to be quite honest. And I think I'd be quite egotistical if I said that I did. But certain people, you know, I've just got certain friends and they've just got a unique energy, man. They just come across, they stand out, you know. They stand out. Yeah, mm. I noticed that too about people. I'm like, if you pick that guy and you put him in a group of like random 30 people off the street, he would stand out. Yeah, it's weird, he'd, he'd isn't be it? the sore thumb. He'd be like, there's something interesting with that guy. But you don't need that, though. No. You know, you, you, you certainly don't need it. And I think most people don't have that, mm. actually. It's just... It just helps? It does help. It, I think because certain people go so much further. You know, like a lot of people in our industry make, you know, 50, 100, 200, 300 a month, maybe four. 100,000. Right? 400K uh, yeah. a month, that range right? 
But then there's the people that are making four mil a month, yep. 10 mil a month, you know, those outliers at the top. And I think one of the things that differentiates them is they've got that edge. Like Cole Gordon has that edge. Mm. He's just a machine. Oh, dude. He's, just He's a younger than machine. us, right? I think he is. I, do, I actually, I had dinner with him about two months ago here in Dubai. I think he's 30. Yeah, he's younger I than us. I think he was here, <laughs> here a, for his 30th birthday. He's a, he's a powerful dude, man. Yeah, and it's just, he's just got that unique focus, energy. He's just an outlier, yeah. you know, and that's what it takes to get to those levels, I think. Speaking of Cole and speaking of Sam, speaking of these outliers, you've joined several masterminds. You have a mastermind yourself. Mm -hmm. You spent over $200,000 on masterminds. Mm -hmm. What would you say, let's just talk the, the quantum mastermind, Sam's and Cole's mastermind. What would you say is your one key takeaway from each? So the very first call that I ever had with Sam when I joined his mastermind, we were talking about my uh, products and prices. And he said to me very calmly, what are you selling? I was like, right, I'm selling a bronze for this, silver, gold, platinum. And he just said to me, which one makes you the most money? And I said to him, platinum. And he said, right, stop selling the other three and just sell that and put all your focus and time and energy and effort into just selling the most expensive thing. And as I've always done, whenever someone above me tells me to do something, I just fucking do it. I don't think, I don't question, I don't talk shit, I don't get scared, I just fucking do it. So that's what I did. And we doubled the business that, that year just from doing that, right? In, in alignment with the VSL funnel and stuff as well. But that was a massive needle mover, right? Scrapping and putting all the focus over there. So I'll always be thankful to Sam for giving me that advice. And Cole Gordon's one thing was really how to hire and ramp and train and maintain the best sales reps. Mm -hmm. That was the one thing. And that's all that I wanted from that mastermind. I just wanted to learn how to hire well, ramp and train and create just great closers. And that's what we got. So, Cool. Yeah, I learned 80% of what I know about closing from him. Yeah, he's, he's just fantastic, isn't he? Dude, it's a funny story. I When I was talking to him, or I was talking to one of his reps, and I felt bad for the rep because in my head I'm like, there's no way I'm buying. I'm like, I'm wasting your time right now. I already told him, like, I'm good. Because at the time I was making like 50K a month. And he's like, don't you want to make more? And I'm like, I'm pretty good, bro. I went from nothing to 50K a month. Like, I'm, I'm chilling. He's like, yeah, but we can help you get to like 100K and, and 200K and even like a mil a month eventually. And I'm like, dude, I'm, I'm good, bro. And I knew I wasn't going to buy. Like, I knew I wasn't going to buy. Then he's like, all right, let me go grab Cole. I'll be back in two minutes. He goes and grabs Cole. Cole comes on the call. And now I feel bad for wasting Cole's time because I'm like, I'm not going to buy, bro. And he was like, using all these different tactics on me. And I'm like, I, I'm aware of your tactics, bro. I even said that. I was like, oh, I was like, oh that's a good one. I'm going to use that one. Oh. And, uh, and then he said something that really spoke to me. He's like, who do you look up to online? And I listed the names. Becker, Sam Ovens, Frank Kern. He's like, right. Those people, if they were in your situation right now and they were being offered what you're being offered right now, what would they do? I was like, they'd probably do it. He's like, and you want to be like them, right? And I was like, yeah. He's like, all right, man. You be doing Visa, MasterCard. And I was like, I'm in. Oh, fucking! I couldn't Cole. believe it, dude. Fucking Cole, man. I couldn't believe it, God. and it was a big, big, big boy package. Yeah, he really is the best. Like oh, he is. He's too good. Yeah. Too good. I'm not surprised he's doing so well. Uh huh. So. Let's talk about this book briefly here. So this took you uh, over a year, a year and a half to write or so? Yeah, so it took 10 months to write. 10 months to write. And then it took about four or five months to, we edited it, reviewed it, edited it, reviewed it, mm -hmm. proofread it, reviewed it, designed the cover. There's a whole story I can tell you about the bloody cover. And then, <laughs> did I tell you the story about no, the cover? tell me the story of the cover. So the company that we worked with for the edits and the proofread and the design were fantastic. Brilliant, brilliant company, great people. But when it comes to the, uh, to the uh, cover, they just could not get it right. They were not making anything remotely good enough for me to put out. And I was on a month-long holiday in Thailand with my girlfriend. 
and we were at breakfast one morning and they just sent the second batch of designs from a whole different designer because the first was just terrible. And I was showing my girlfriend on, on my laptop. I was like, what do you think? She's like, it's fucking terrible. I was like, I know. I was like, well, what do you think of this one? She's like, it's even worse. I was like, I know. I was like, what do you think of this one? She's like, no, you're going to have to go back for a third, third redesign. So I was emailing them and saying, you know, these are not good enough. We need to go again. And before I'd even sent the email, my girlfriend had gone on her mobile phone whilst at breakfast, gone on canva.com and designed that cover. And she said, what do you think of this? And I was like, that's the best. That's one of the best book covers I've ever seen in my life. Like it just looks amazing. And she was like, oh, we, let's use this. And then I, we sent that and we used it. Wow. So my girlfriend made that in about 10 minutes on a mobile at breakfast in Thailand. I hope she gets royalties. Hey, well, I give, I give her a girlfriend salary, so she's getting more than royalties. I love it, man. So tell me briefly about the, uh, your book writing process. So you wake up every morning and you just get to writing, have a coffee, or how does that look? Yeah, so when I started writing it, the first thing I did was plan out what I wanted to have in there in this kind of section. So I was like, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll talk about this and then offer and price and funnels and blah, blah, blah. So I planned it all out. And then I actually went to Bali for two weeks. And every morning I would get up, go to the restaurant, get a coffee and just write for about 90 minutes and then stop. And then next morning, another 90 minutes, stop. And I did about 80% of the book in that two weeks. And then I left it alone for about two, two months then came back and then slowly started going back through it. Just do an hour every morning. Editing. Yeah, just going back through it and this, I need to add this in and change that, take that out on and on. And then it again, it took about 10 months until I was really, really, really happy with it. And then I went to the editing company and they put an editor through it and started changing it all around. And they were like, you can't have a paragraph this long, a uh, chapter this long and you can't say this there, you've got to move it around. And then that's what took the other four or five months. Uh, and then it was then it was done. So that was the process, just slowly and steadily. I, didn't, I was in no rush to, to put it out, uh, no rush at all. And then um, now it's finally ready, and it came out two days ago. So Cool. It's no, no, not a small book either. It's quite thick. Yeah, it's 338 pages. I, I couldn't tell you how many words, but it's, it's a lot of words. And essentially, what is in there is what's in my, my training program that clients get, mm. right? So everything is in there. Obviously, it's nothing on the video course because videos you can't beat and walk, in-person walkthroughs you can't beat. But uh, it's, it's, it's all in there, really. So I've, I've held nothing back. It's not a lead magnet. You know, that is not something I want people to buy to send them into a funnel. Nothing like that. I wanted to make something so great where people are just mind blown that it's so great and so cheap. Cool. So, so if, some, if someone wants to make... A lot of money with their online education business. This is the book. That's the instruction manual. Cool. Last question for you, man. You've made more money than most people ever make in their entire lives. And you were once relatively broke. And so for the longest time, you had this goal of making a lot of money. Now that you've arrived at that goal... How do you still have the motivation to actually do anything? And do you ever ask yourself, like, what now? Absolutely. Absolutely. So one thing that I'm big on is journaling. Right. So every few days I go to my journal and I just, I mean, nowadays I write down, like, uh, what am I working on? What am I ha finding fun? What do I not enjoy right now? How is my life? How is my health? You know, what, what, where am I at cash-wise? Where am I at asset-wise? What am I working on? And I just organize all my thoughts. So I do that every few days and I've done that for like three, four years, right? Now, if we rewind to not last year, the year before, November, I was downstairs in the building that I live in, uh, having a coffee, writing in my journal. And I was thinking, what is making me happy right now? What's not making me happy? What do I want to do? All, all of this stuff. And I thought to myself, I wrote down this question. What is the number one thing that I, that I enjoy the most in the world to do with my time? And the answer was talk about business because I love going to dinners and talking about business. I love coming on podcasts and talking about business. I love just, I just love learning and talking about it and sharing it and growing it. And I thought I'm not doing that right now, almost at all. I do it with my buddies at dinner two or three times a month and otherwise I'm not doing it. So most of my time is spent not doing the number one thing I love the most. 
And at that moment, I WhatsApped Dan Bradbury, literally right then and there. And I said, Dan, I want to sell my business because I'm going to go and do business consulting instead. So then we got on with the process of selling the company. And obviously I sold last year. And one of my biggest dreams was to start a YouTube channel and talk about business and share everything that I'd learned. And it was about that time I started the book as well. So I, I thought, right, I'm going to write a book to build my brand. I'm going to make a YouTube channel to build my brand. I'm going to uh, do business consulting next. And my, my goal was like, if I can just make 40, 50K cash collected a month and absolutely love it, I'm going to have my dream life. Uh, and just do the YouTube for fun, do the book for fun, do the work for fun, and just enjoy it. So when I realized that, I built it. And um, the thing that I'm most focused on now is money is still important, but I've created a mission statement for myself. And it's three things. Make money, have fun, and help people. Mm. So that is all that I spend my time doing now. I'm making money, I'm having fun, and I'm helping people. And I think that just keeps me in perfect alignment. So I can keep building wealth because I want more money. I want more wealth. I want to see how far I can go, right? But I, st I don't need it, but it's a fun game to play. Having fun is fucking critical, man. If you're not having fun, you might as well not be alive, you know? Because there's nothing, I mean, otherwise you're just going to hate your life. So have fun. And helping people is the only thing that really, truly fulfills you, man. If you're not helping people, you're just, I mean, what's the point in life, man? Yeah, you can have fun and just fuck around on your own, but you've, it's people, man that really matter. So I just live now by those three things. And if I'm in alignment, I'm happy. And if I'm not, I sort it the fuck out and get happy again, you know? So, and I, I just love it. So Cool. I love that. So, so you're the, the secret for staying motivated, secret to having continued purpose, even though you've already made the money is, um, finding out that one thing you actually like to do mm. and then just doing that. Exactly. What, what's the number one thing that you love the most in the world? And how can you make that your full-time career? I think a lot of people, they really love helping people too. Yeah, so. they do. And the cool thing is too, you saying having fun, you put that right in the middle there. I think what having fun is like, you can have fun while helping people and making money because you can make money from helping people. So it all, it's all synergistic. I love that. Yeah, dude, I've, I've never made more net cash. Last month was the most net cash I've ever made in my entire life, actually. Last month? Last month. How much? 364,000 uh, US cash collected. Amazing, bro. So. Net. <laughs> cool, bro. Well, thank you very much for the uh, chat. And uh, let's hang out in Dubai sometime. Let's do it, man. Awesome. Thanks so much for having me, dude. Appreciate you. Cheers, you too.